It's been ages since he's done his last video. What the hell has he been doing? Boy, oh, that's thunder! What the fuck's up with you? I'm doing the Assassin's Creed Valhalla review, innit? That's a normal helmet and shield, you daft muppet! Okay, so I didn't have any Viking theme props. This is the closest I had. Fine, fine, just do your review or whatever. Just don't bother me unless you've got something to smash. Hello and welcome back. And it's been 84 years since I did my last review. Or at least it certainly feels that way with the amount of time it took me to get through this game. That game being Assassin's Creed Valhalla. A game that was despised by the fans of the series despite selling pretty well. But after several years and a bunch of bug patches, there's been some slight degree of re-evaluation of this game. Also I had to buy a second copy of the game because the first copy I had had a massive hole in it. Guess that's what I get for buying second hand. Anyway, it's taken long enough already. Let's just get to the point and start the review. The story involves a new calamity where the solar flare dispersal field from Assassin's Creed 3 is starting to malfunction, causing electromagnetic pulses, which, among other things, is causing satellites to fall out of the sky. And the protagonist of the previous two games has to dive into the memories of a Viking named Eivor to try and figure out what's going on. Eivor being a Norse man, or woman depending on your preferred gender of drunken, hairy Scandinavian, had their parents murdered when they were young by a rival clan, and was rescued and raised by a minor Norwegian king. Eivor, along with their adopted brother Sigurd, that they call Blood Brother for some reason, and two strange, mysterious, hooded assassins from the Middle East, head off to take down the man that killed Eivor's parents. They managed to do so relatively quickly, only for it to be revealed by the assassins led by a man named Hytham, that the man that you just killed was a member of the Order of the Ancients, hence why the assassin has agreed to help you. However, the son of the man you killed gets let off by Harold Fairhair, another Norwegian king, so you don't go after him. And at this point, Sigurd's father declares fealty to Harold Fairhair, who plans to reunite all of Norway. Eivor and Sigurd don't like this arrangement, so steal a long ship and a bunch of people with them and head off for a new life in England while also agreeing to help Hythen and the Assassins take out the Order members that have infiltrated England's hierarchy. Eivor has also been having visions and seeing apparitions of Odin, which will become important later on in the game. From this point forward, your main objectives are to build up the settlement at Ravensthorpe, make alliances with the kingdoms and counties of England, track down and assassinate members of the Order, whose identities are revealed to you by a mysterious benefactor, as well as travel into Norse mythology by partaking in suspicious substances. After a while, Sigurd is captured by the Order and is tortured and his arm dismembered so they can obtain some mysterious information that he apparently has. You manage to rescue Sigurd, who has become very mentally disturbed, and then Eivor accompanies him back to Norway to find something that was revealed to him, which turns out to be an ancient Isu site. This site just so happens to contain the fuel generator, as well as this weird virtual reality thing. And Sigurd and Eivor, at first coming across the fuel generator, think it's the tree of Idrisil because it kind of looks like a tree. So they head into the virtual reality that then takes on the form of Valhalla. After managing to escape this VR Halla, Eivor is then confronted by Hytham who wants to kill him for reasons we don't quite know yet. 
but Eivor and Sigum managed to defeat Hytham and trap him within the virtual reality. From this point forward, depending on your actions, Sigurd will either stay with your group or leave you. Then the modern day protagonist heads to Norway to get into the virtual reality to hopefully fix what's wrong with the emitter. She manages to do so while also bumping into Hytham who is still there. However, she came with the staff from the previous game, which makes her immortal and regenerative, but she managed to drop the staff when she went into the virtual reality. And it turns out the side effect of fixing the emitter is it causes radiation leaks, meaning she can't leave the virtual reality without dying. However, since Hython's body was already kind of dead, when he leaves the virtual reality, he manages to land on top of the staff, which causes him to regenerate, pretty much setting up the events for Assassin's Creed Mirage. However, we're not quite done yet, as there is sort of a true ending slash epilogue, where Eivor, along with a bunch of other Vikings, managed to defeat King Alfred at the Battle of Chippenham. And then Eivor meets up with Alfred on the Isle of Athelney, where Alfred reveals that he was the head of the Order, but he disagreed with the Order's ideals. Turns out that he was the benefactor sending you information about members of the Order, so you could kill them off and he could dismantle the Order and replace it with a new Order based around Christianity. Perhaps a Knight of the Holy Temple, should we say. However, the twists aren't over yet, as it is revealed that the Norse gods were actually ancient Isu, who decided to download their DNA into the human race so they could reincarnate at a later date. Eivor being the reincarnation of Odin, Sigurd being the reincarnation of Tyr, and Hytham being the reincarnation of Loki. And that's the end for real this time. While there are some similarities between this game and its two predecessors, it's the differences that, quite frankly, may call break this game for some people. The Hidden Blade is back, although it's not quite as consistent at killing people as it used to be, and the combat is a lot slower and more heavy than the previous games, hence why some people don't like it. Now, whilst there are many sets of weapons and armour in this game, it doesn't have quite as many as the previous two games, instead with more of a focus on upgrading the ones you like with the resources you gather. Along with the main quest, there are a bunch of side quests, hidden powerful enemies to fight, secrets to reveal, treasures to loot, and monasteries to sack. Because you're a Viking. What else did you expect? And while the quality does vary, the quantity is certainly th something this game doesn't lack for which is simultaneously a blessing and a curse. As this game's content contains a large chunk of England, a bit of Norway, Asgard, Jotunheim, Helheim, and its multiple layers. The Isle of Skye, where Cassandra from Assassin's Creed Odyssey makes a cameo. A bit of Vinland. And in the DLC, they add to that bunch. It's northeast bit of France, a large chunk of Ireland, as well as the Beowulf and Ragnarok storylines. And since this is a mon AAA game, that means this game has a cash shop full of microtransactions. I've become so numb I can't even care. The graphics here are a bit of a mixed bag as well the stuff done for the world with its detail and design creates a very interesting and immersive if not entirely accurate depiction of 9th century England it is very appreciated by me the same cannot be said with the character designs especially the facial animations that feel 10 years behind everything else that was coming out at the time and whilst I have heard that this game especially the PS4 version had issues with the frame rate and consistent crashes, I personally didn't really experience any of that on my end. And as for the music, Music Meister!
Uh, uh, sorry, it's been so long I kind of forgot you needed me. This game tries its best to fit the historical setting. For example, in the Norwegian sections, they use a lot of citterns and horns and other traditional Norwegian instruments. While in the bits set in England, they use a mixture of sort of medieval and rustic music. And occasionally they add sort of synthetic drones for additional atmosphere. In fact, the soundtrack feels very similar to the likes of the TV series is Vikings and The Last Kingdom, which isn't surprising as apparently some of the people that worked on their shows worked on some aspects of this game as well. Despite its reputation and long playtime, I honestly quite enjoyed it in spite of its flaws and excessive length. I was quite absorbed by the story and world being English myself and having a fascination with this time period. While I won't say this game is for everyone, especially not the classic hardcore Assassin's Creed fans, I will say this game is worth giving a go if you have the time and patience. Well, that's all from me. See you guys next time. Now, what the hell am I going to do with this broken spare copy? I'll have it.